If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you'll get early access to my tutorials as well as the unedited full-length videos. Hey guys, welcome back to this sixth part of the Obi-Wan Kenobi tutorial series. In this video, we're going to go through the process of creating all of our texturing maps to create a realistic skin shader, starting with the albedo map, then going on to the specular roughness map, the coat map, and then finally the SSS scale map. Okay, so jumping straight into Mari here, I'm going to start off by showing you the different layers of my albedo map, and then I'll go into greater detail on how I created those. The first layer that I'll start off with is the texturing XYZ map that was baked out of 3ds wrap. I've painted out the areas that I didn't need, like the hair and the eyelids. After that, I've created a base layer and placed it below my texturing XYZ layer. The base layer is just a solid color, picked from a color from the XYZ map. After the base layer, I've created a tile layer. This is made up of a tile skin photograph that I've created inside of Photoshop. I've also applied a grade node to this layer to match the colors from my XYZ map. After that is the pale and noise layer, which is also placed below the texturing XYZ map. It's also made up of two colors that were picked from the texturing XYZ map. I've scaled down the size of the pattern and lowered the opacity to help it blend with the previous two base layers. The last layer below my texturing XYZ map is just a simple paint layer which I've used to blend the head and the neck together. Above the texturing XYZ map is the projection layer, where I've projected parts of the XYZ map on top of it to clean up the map in areas such as the eyebrows or under the chin. Next is the paint layers, which probably take the longest time to create. In these layers, I'm painting out things like moles and blemishes, and also painting things in, like the colour around the eyes or the cheeks or the ears. The copy channel layer is just used for lining up my colours between the different layers. It's turned off before export. Finally, I correct the colour of the map, reducing the contrast first and then applying a grade node to counter the darkening effect that happens when you convert sRGB textures into ACES. Just to reiterate what I said in the second part of this series when I set up our displacement maps inside of Mari, I want to make sure that our colour space for the albedo map is set to ASUS, ASUS CG, as well as it being 16-bit, and in the colour settings tab, just making sure that I'm using the ASUS OCIO config file and that the Mari specific conversions are being applied to the different file types. Once my project is set up, I'll create a new layer, right click on it, and then go to import, import to selected layer. From there, I'll just browse to my baked texturing XYZ map that I created from 3ds wrap. It's important to know here that if you're using UDIMs on your model, your map needs to have the UDIM number in the name, such as 1001 or 1002, otherwise it won't actually show up in your file browser. Once I select the file, I'll change the color space to Utility sRGB Texture. This will convert the map to use the ACES CG primaries. In the latest version of Mari, it should already set up the color space automatically. Once that's imported, I'll take a look around my model to see which areas need the most cleanup work. I'll also change the shader to flat, just to see the map a little bit better. I'll rename my layer and then go to the base layer underneath. With the color picker, I'll select part of the map and then with a large brush, I'll paint in that color onto the base layer. Once that's painted in, I'll go back to my texturing XYZ layer 
and either create a layer mask or switch the brush mode to clear and start painting out the areas that I won't need. I would really recommend using a layer mask for this process as it's non-destructive, whereas if you're using the clear paint mode, it removes all that information. Once I'm happy with the cleanup, I'll make a procedural layer and select tiled from the pattern option. Inside the tile layer, I'm gonna to browse to my tile skin texture that I made from a photo inside of Photoshop. Mari will automatically change the color space to utility sRGB texture and bring it into the ACES primaries. Once it's imported, the first thing that I want to do is to match the color of my texturing XYZ map. The easiest way to do this is with a copy channel node. Inside the copy channel node, I can select the red, green and blue channels, just like I did with the displacement map in part two. I'll move the copy channel node above the texturing XYZ map so that it will affect every layer. Then in the tile layer, I'll create a grade node in its adjustment stack. Inside this grade node, I can now go to the multiply and edit the individual red, green and blue channels to align with the texturing XYZ map. Once the individual channels are lined up, the color will match. The next layer that I'm going to make is the procedural Perlin noise pattern. This layer just helps break up the tile skin layer below. With the color picker, I'll select a light and a dark color of different hues. I'll then try and match the scale of the noise to my texturing XYZ map and reduce the opacity to blend it in with the tile skin layer. Once I'm happy with these base skin layers, I'll then go back into my texturing XYZ layer 
and paint out any additional areas that need removing. Now I'm ready to do some projection painting. I'll create a new layer and call it projection. Then I'll go up to my image manager and then import my texturing XYZ map. Once it's imported, it should automatically set up the projection brush for you. First, I want to project over the eyebrows with the skin from the map. The easiest way to do this is to go into the UV mode, align your projection map to the texturing XYZ layer. Once the scale is lined up, I'll translate down the projection map so that the skin is over the eyebrows, and then I'll start projection painting to remove the eyebrows. It's a good idea to use a soft brush or medium brush for this work. This process can take a bit of time to do, but it's important to do it correctly. You should be careful of any repeating patterns when you project as they'll show up in your renders and take away from the realism. Once I'm finished with one side, I'll start on the other and then work my way through the model, looking out for any areas that would benefit from a projection layer.
Once I'm happy with that, I want to create one more base layer to try and blend the other base layers to the texturing XYZ layers. In this paint layer, I like to use a few different types of brushes when I'm painting skin. The soft turtle, paw or octo skin brushes are some of my favorites, but my number one go-to brush is the hives brush. This brush gives a really nice natural mottled effect. Selecting different hues and values from the texturing XYZ map and then layering them on top of each other is the best way that I've found to create a natural blend. Painting skin takes a bit of trial and error to get right, but it's definitely worth the time. So before we go any further, I'd like to fix that problem that we were having in the last video where converting our texturing XYZ maps from sRGB to ACES was darkening the images. I'm jumping into Nuke for a minute here to show you a little trick that I used to help me determine the grade of an sRGB texture that's been converted into ACES. So what I'm looking at here is just an 8-bit sRGB color chart that was posted by a lighting and compositing supervisor called Christophe Brejon. For anyone interested in the theory behind ACES, I really recommend that you check out his website. He literally wrote the book on ACES. I'll leave a link in the description below. The albedo color chart that he's posted has been reverse engineered to show the correct ACES color values once it's been converted from sRGB into ACES. The way that we convert 8-bit sRGB textures into ACES CG is to use the IDT or input transform of utility sRGB texture. I can check this by selecting the mid gray background and see if the values match the stated values below. I'm just gonna throw a disclaimer out here before I start this. The chart that I'm using does not state absolute albedo values for different materials. They're more like a ballpark figure and should be used as such. Everyone has a slightly different skin color, even those of the same ethnicity. So you might have to play around with these values a little bit to get them to look correct. The first thing that I'll do is to find the light skin swatch and note down the values. With the texturing XYZ color map imported, we also want to convert this to ACES CG by using the IDT utility sRGB texture, just like we did in Mari. If I grab a section of the skin and see its average color value and luminance, what I want to do is to grade this map to match the color chart swatch value for the light colored skin. Firstly, I'll apply a color correct node because I want to reduce the contrast a little bit. This actually pulled down the value slightly, but now I'll use a grade node to pull them back up closer to the color swatch. With some adjustments to the red, green, and blue channels in the multiply parameter, my map is now closer to the color swatch of the light colored skin inside of ACES. I can do either of two things here to get these changes into Mari. I can save out the map with the color space ACES CG and import it into Mari, or I can just create a contrast and grade node inside of Mari and transfer those values across. I like to do any changes to my map inside of Mari, and so that's what I'm gonna do here. Back inside of Mari now, I'm gonna replicate those changes. So the first thing I'll do 
is to create a contrast node. Unfortunately, Mari's contrast node is not the same as Nuke's. So what I'm about to do here is a bit of a hack. I'll adjust the contrast pivot to one and then slightly lower the contrast. I'll go back inside of Nuke and view the color corrects change to my map. I'll then start flicking back and forth between Mari and Nuke and try and eyeball a contrast change. I know there's got to be a better way of doing this, so if anybody has the answer, I'd be eager to know. Next I'll create the grade node. These values can be easily transferred across. Taking note of my multiply values from Nuke, I'll then import them into the grade node inside of Mari. And that's all there is to it. We now have our color map set up to the right values for Asus CG. The next thing that I need to do is to create the paint layers that are used to try and get a closer likeness to the character. I like to paint out any blemishes in the lips first by selecting the clone stamp brush, then changing the source to the texturing XYZ color map. I'll then try and copy the shape of the lips by looking at some of the reference on my other monitor. When I'm ready to start doing some skin painting, I'll switch off my grade layers before I colour pick. This is because the colour picker will select the colour with the grade applied and then apply the grade on top of it, which wouldn't look correct. What we want to work with is the colour from the XYZ map and then apply the grade afterwards. Just like I did with the underside of the jaw, I'm going to use the hives brush to give me a natural mottled effect. I'm just looking at my reference now and trying to see where Ewan has more red patches in his skin tone. This can take a little bit of practice as it's not always obvious to see, especially in different lighting conditions. I can see that Ewan has a lot of red hues under his nose and his nostrils, so I'm just slightly painting in those tones in there. I'm constantly toggling back on the grade nodes to make sure that things are looking correct. I'm also starting to paint in the lighter tones here. As a good rule of thumb, anywhere on the face that has a bone close to the skin, such as the bridge of the nose or the cheekbones, these areas will have more yellow in the skin tone. This is also true for areas that have a lot of hard cartilage, like the tip of the nose or the folds of the ears.
I've noticed that Ewan has a mole on the other side of his face, so I'm just cloning across this mole here, and then cloning it back out on the other side. Something that I'm seeing in the reference is that Ewan's lips are a little bit lighter than what I currently have. So in the XYZ layer, I'm going to create a grade node in an adjustment stack, and then in that stack, I'm going to create a mass stack. With the mass stack enabled, I'll view the current paint target, paint everything black, and then paint in a mask for the lips in white. Going back into viewing my current channel, I'll go to the grade node I've just created and start playing with the values to make the lips look a little bit lighter. I'll also refine my mask whilst doing this. Next, I'm going to work on the eyes. Turning the wireframe on here just allows me to see where the edges of the eyelids are. With a soft brush, I'll paint in the red tones behind the eyeballs and the tear duct. Once that's done, I'm just going to continue to look at my reference and try and match the skin tones. These paint layers can take a lot of time to get right. Between painting, I was constantly saving out my maps, bringing them into Maya and doing some test renders. There's a bit of back and forth at this stage. Because of the limitations of my laptop, I couldn't use Mari's shader features, but to anyone that's on a higher end machine, I would really recommend bringing your HDRIs into Mari and test rendering them there. Ewan has a lot of red tones around his eyes. It's actually something that really helped with his likeness. Spending the time to get those colors correct really improved the realism in my render.
The last thing that I want to do is some final cleanup work on my colour map. This just consists of clone stamping out any blemishes or moulds on the face that I don't want to keep, and also painting over any dark lines or artefacts with a soft brush. There's always some cleanup work to do around the ears, just because of the shadows of the texturing XYZ maps, but you can be quite rough with your brush strokes, as the subsurface scattering that will happen in our shader inside of Maya will hide quite a lot. Once I'm happy with the colour map, I'll go up to the channel, right click and export the current channel. I'll make sure that the colour space is set to Asus CG and save the file as either a .tif file or an .exr. So now that I have my colour map set up, I want to quickly show you the other maps that I use that I create for my characters. A quick side note here, before I do any work in Mari, 
I always set up some base values in my shader inside of Maya so that I have something to start off with. I use three other maps for my skin shader other than my color and displacement maps. These are specular roughness. This determines how rough your material is. A lot of the detailed spec look of a shader is achieved with the displacement map, but the spec roughness map can also help you get a lot of extra details in there, as well as adding some extra realism to your shader. Coat weight. This map is used as a mask for a layer of dirt, sweat and oils that sit on the surface of the skin. The map allows me to paint in areas that have a higher and lower accumulation of these dirt, sweat and oils that sit on the surface of the skin. Finally, we have the SSS scale map. This allows me to control the amount of subsurface scattering happening in certain areas of the face. For example, anywhere that has a bone close to the surface of the skin, such as the bridge of the nose or the cheekbones, these areas would have slightly less scattering effect happening in them than say, somewhere like the cheeks that are more fleshy. A more realistic way to achieve this would be to create a subsurface color map, but I can usually get some realistic results just by using this map alone. So let's see how these maps are broken down. For the specular roughness map, I'll make sure that the color space of my channel is set to utility raw. And I'll also make sure that raw data and scalar data are checked. Then in the color picker, I'll choose utility raw from the color space dropdown. The value that was working for me well inside of my test renders in Maya was a value of 0.42. In the base layer, I'll paint this value onto my model. I'll also paint in some slightly lighter areas where I want there to be more roughness, such as the cheeks, and some darker values where I want it to be smoother, such as the lips or the eyes. This can be done in the same layer or in multiple layers. After that, I've brought in my displacement B channel and set it to soft light to add a bit of detail into the map. Then. I've added a cellular noise pattern, set it to overlay and reduce the opacity to give some subtle breakup to the map. I'll then export this as either a TIFF or an EXR file under the color space utility raw. Next up is the coat weight map. I'll do the same thing here as the specular roughness map making sure its color space is set to utility raw, and also making sure that raw data and scalar data is checked. In Maya, I was getting some good results with the weight of 0.27. So I'll paint this value in to my base layer, as well as painting in some lighter and darker values for where I want higher and lower accumulation of coat. I've then brought in the displacement R channel and set it to darken to give the map a little bit more detail. I'll export it out in the same way that I did the specular roughness. Lastly is the subsurface scattering scale map. I'll do the same thing. Color space to utility raw, raw data and scalar data checked. In the base layer, I painted in a value of 0.13 and then painted in some higher and lower values for where I want there to be more or less subsurface scattering happening in certain areas. I'll then bring in the displacement green channel, set it to soft light and reduce the opacity down just to give the map a little bit more detail. And that's it. We now have all our maps for our skin shader. In the next part, I'll be showing you where I plug in all of these maps, as well as going more in depth into Arnold's shader parameters when creating realistic skin. I hope to see you all there. Cheers guys.